another piano class here. Uh, hopefully in this section we're going to have some fun and go into a lot of styles of music that you can play. Uh, obviously you won't need all of these styles all the time. Some of them we use pretty rarely, but if you know it, you can use it when the time comes. There seems to be a time for all kinds of music. So uh, we'll jump right in here with uh, a waltz rhythm. And let's see what we can do. Let's take a song like uh, My Family, My Family, for example. This is your typical waltz, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, that sort of rhythm. Uh, like the chorus might go. My family, my family, I know it's right, my family. And you're going like this. Basically just one bass note in each measure. See my left hand? Uh, your right hand is doing, this is doing the one and this is the doing the two and the three, which is pretty basic. Now, you can throw a little, instead of just going, put a little gives a little bounce there. Also in your bass hand you can go like this. So you can do little things with your bass hand there. A little jump note in there to make it bounce a little bit. Or with the right hand instead of just going like this or instead of you could go like this. All these things give it a little more inner rhythm and it makes it a little more interesting. Another thing I find myself doing a lot is instead of totally just hitting one note in the bass and sometimes it sounds too empty on that first beat so I find myself hitting a note with my uh, right hand along with it like this gives it this makes it just a little more interesting arrangement and it makes a little more harmony a lot of times it's nice to not hit the same note as the bass but to instead hit a harmony note with it like this. Or a C chord, you hit a C bass and an E note. Or a D chord, walk up to a C. Walk down to a D. It's this nice harmony thing that happens when you have a, you got your bass note, an octave, and then two more work very nicely. Uh, another example of that would be uh, I can't even walk. Uh, rock number one would surely be me. This is an interesting thing that happens in a lot of songs. Uh, thought I could build on life's sinking sand. Go to A minor. So the next chord is actually a C. But it sounds nice instead of a C in the bass, you put the fifth, which is a G. I'll show you. Thought I could build on life's sinking sand, but I can't even walk. Put this G in the bass, even though it's a C chord then your G. I'll show you that again. We'll probably run into that again. I'll show you next time. Many times that last note right before the line or the song is finished has this feeling to it. Instead of going C, G, C, you have this G in the bass note. 
another rhythm, uh, real common in our family songs, is kind of a calypso rhythm. And uh, I'll mention this too quite a few times. A lot of our, a lot of things we do on the piano are actually sort of imitating or uh, giving you the feeling of what you would do on a guitar. If you were playing, let's say, uh, All I Want to Do is Serve Him on the guitar, you might go dum brum dum ba dum ba dum brum dum ba It's kind of a natural strum that you learn. Well, on the piano, you sort of echo that same feeling. Your bass is doing this kind of Latin rhythm here. And your right hand is doing like the strum, like the you pick over the strings on your guitar. You might not do it quite this rhythmically, singing this song, all I want to do is serve him, but it's kind of that feeling. You know. Day I took, I took an honest look. Simplify that without this roll thing in there. You could do this. Which is still basically, I think, a calypso or Latin feeling. And it's amazing how many of our family songs will fit in this, uh, this beat, this rhythm. Probably because our songs are written on guitar and it's just a real natural strum for us. And uh, it's interesting, you know, when you're playing piano, especially if you're the only accompanist or the only musician, you sort of take on the position of being the whole band. You're the bass player, you're the drummer, you're the guitarist, and the soloist as well. When you're doing this, you're the bass player, or if we, how about this beat? Bum, 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 bum. It's kind of like the bass drum would do if you had a drummer there. Bum, 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 bum. Then with your right hand, you're kind of keeping the rhythm going. This feeling is, is almost like the hi-hat going along. So it's a good thing to keep in mind that you're kind of... Uh, keeping everything going instead of just going you know you could just play the chords to the song but actually what you're doing is you're kind of being like a band you're providing a bass you're providing a basic rhythm you're providing the inner uh, rhythms to sort of keep it moving in between the downbeats and stuff if you are playing in a combo or a band uh, and you're you're the keyboard player and you've got a bass player or a drummer or something and guitarists you don't need to play so much. If you do, your sound will probably be kind of messy if you're trying to still do all these parts. You might be able to do, like on a song like All I Want to Do is Serve Him, you might be able to do a part like... You don't need to play the bass because you've got a bass player. Uh, you don't need to keep your hand going all the time like that because you've got a guitarist who's doing that. So you can find things to fill in. Uh, it's one of our common faults is to play too much. But a lot of times if you're in a band or a combo, you find that less is more. Just find the apples of gold that really fit where uh, no one else is playing. Find a spot where no one else is playing and, you know, you could do a little line on top. You know, they're playing these parts and you're just going... Like a counter melody or something. So just find where you fit in if you're in a combo. Here's a little ending that we often use. It's pretty common. You ever heard that? You're just playing a C, and then you're playing an F minor sixth, which is a F minor, and add a six on there. C or whatever key you're in if you're in A I'm sorry we'll go back to C here C and then you went up four notes right C to get an F chord F minor 6 if we were in A you'd go up four notes 
to a D and play a D minor 6. I'd like to explain things to you with chords and give you a little theory so that you can take what I'm showing you and you can uh, apply it to a different key and you can work it out. So we're taking the root and then the fourth chord, one, two, three, four, make that a minor sixth. Now here's a style of music that's uh, also quite common uh, over the last 20 years. Uh, it's used on a song like There's Born a Child. And this type of song is uh, real easy to play. You just keep a chord going. That's your sort of your beat, your downbeat with your right hand. This is There's Born a Child. right hand is hitting every beat and my bass is kind of like this or a song like let it be I think this is one of the original songs it was like this sort of feeling. Let me show you a little more about this style now. You can just play straight like this, but I often find myself, one, I, don't, I want to fill in those gaps a little bit, because this gets a little bit tiring just to hear that pulsing over and over again. So you might find yourself going like this, putting a little thing in between there. picture your hi-hat on your drums going and you, you want to hear a little bit of that sometimes so you put in a little kind of tiny arpeggio it's not constant but you just kind of you feel the need for it sometimes Sometimes in your bass, I showed you this line, right? Where you're just going bum, 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 but you can also go bum, 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 bum. All these little things will make your music more rhythmic. Again, it's that theory of like, it's you're the band, you're playing all the parts. about this is if you know chords I'm not really thinking about exactly should I play this note or should I play that note I just know that I'm on a C chord and I can move my fingers anywhere I want so if you know chords put your fingers on that chord and you just move them in rhythm sometimes I'm hitting two notes here and only one note, and sometimes just a like a, a simple arpeggio of single notes. Sometimes I'm going like this, but this is not. You notice how I'm hitting that on the off beats? Bum. Well, sometimes I hit it on the downbeat too, like bum bum. By doing that, I get this full chord on every beat, but in between it, I get those off beats. There's your example of that slash chord of F over G. It always seems kind of nice. So how about, here's another nice, similar style. Maybe you've heard this before, this sound. 
That's real easy. You just take a... Okay, you're starting with the C chord, right? Now, let's start down here. Let's take every other note. Instead of hitting all the notes of a C chord, let's take every other note. Skip this one. That one. Skip this one. Hit that one. Skip your G and hit a C. This is a real pretty way to play chords by leaving out every other note. That's a C chord. Now, I can play an F chord real easily just by moving these two inner notes up. That's an F chord. Um, again, starting with a C, because an F chord has a C note in it, right? Start with your C on, in the bass. Don't play the F here, but skip it. Skip, play, skip, play. So what you have is just your two inner notes are moving around. It's kind of a nice sound. Could go up more. You might be in the key of A. Take an A, skip every other note. I'll let you work that out on your own. How about... Um, Let's see here. Oh, another thing you can do with this style of uh, sort of let it be sort of style of music. Is you can do a little bass lead in like that. That's probably what a bass guitarist would do if he had one. things like that. Just fooling around, you know. And then I did this. You can learn a lot of bass lines by listening to do the bass parts on our music. Um, another common thing that will happen with your bass part, in case you didn't notice I like bass, <laughs> but I think it's really important and you want to have some bottom in your music. Uh, otherwise it gets too airy and it seems like you want to have something down there, uh, an anchor to hold you down when you're playing. If you're playing on a real piano it's really nice because uh, you get this nice, you got strength down there. People like to be supported when they're playing. They don't want to lead you. They want you to lead and be a support, and a, to be the support underneath them. So here's a, a line that often happens with your bass. Let's say you were, let's take a C progression. Sometimes you might have something like this. That's a G chord with a B in the bass. A minor. Now what if you went like this? That's kind of nice. That was an A minor, an A minor with a G in the bass, and then an F sharp. So you could call that an A minor with an F sharp in the bass. And then I went to a G suspended fourth. And then to a G. And then a C. You may, do you remember how to make a suspended fourth? You go one, four, five. Suspended fourth is one, four, and five. And the reason they call it suspended is because when you hear this, suspended fourth, you want to go want to go to the next that thing there has got to resolve as they say it's got to get to its destination you're on the way somewhere and then to your C 
That happens a lot in our music. Actually, this has been part of music for hundreds of years, this progression of, a, for example, a G suspended fourth, and then a G, and then a C. It's real common. Let's see here. Earlier, I think in the first class, I mentioned about using different inversions of chords. Instead of always having to go C, jump up here to an F, jump up here to a B flat, you can find different inversions which make it so you hardly have to move your hand at all. Here's a C, here's an F, B flat, E flat, A flat, E. I can get all around the place chord wise without hardly moving from this basic position by using different inversions. There is one time when you uh, you do keep the same inversion, uh, like if you were playing a sort of a, uh, maybe a honky tonk sort of song, you might hear a line like this. I'll show you this style a little bit more later, but I just want to show you this movement of the chords. This is one time where it's kind of the point of it is that you do keep the same inversion as you move. class about arpeggios. Some songs are almost nothing but arpeggios. Let's take a song like Whom Have I in Heaven But Thee. This is a, a song that you could play almost the whole song just with these rolling arpeggio parts. Whom have I in heaven but thee? about the left hand here. You notice I'm not playing this, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going. Because this just gets muddy and unclear down there. But if you can spread this out, usually I, I when I'm starting an arpeggio down there, I kind of, these are usually my first three notes. Or, so that it's really spread out and kind of spacey down there. B flat. That's that's a B flat chord. But I'm, I'm taking this bass, putting it down there, taking the B flat and jumping up there with it. Here's an F. Here's a B flat. And my hands are working together here. See, I go up the first three notes, but then I take over with this hand. But it sounds just kind of like one line going up and down. Another thing I wanted to bring out, a nice arpeggio, is when you hit the second note in the scale, like this. Or, how about this? This is a real common arpeggio these days in instrumental music. This, uh, your fifth note in the scale here is kind of hitting every offbeat. I'm doing the same uh, pattern on the B flat chord. You can use that a lot. If you're just making up an instrumental piece or something, you can take that arpeggio and do a lot with it. Seems you don't get tired of it. So, um, let's take this song now.
sometimes you want to get a little chord in there. Brum. Brum. You're strumming. It's like you're strumming a guitar. Two chords. Every new chord, I'm strumming it. But in between, I keep my arpeggio going. Now, I could just hit that chord. But doesn't it sound a little bit prettier to kind of roll it? Makes it a little softer, not quite as attacking. Here's another uh, example of where we imitate a guitar sound. You know when a guitarist picks with his fingers and he's hitting all six strings in like ding 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 ding. Uh, you'll find that in some of our music. Like take a song like It's Better to Try and Fail. I think the intro of it goes something like this. This is your basic feeling. You've got this kind of bass thing going like that, which is what the guitarist would be doing with his thumb. And you're kind of picking these other strings in between. Again, I would probably never do this the same way twice, but what I'm showing you is the method and sort of the, the uh, rhythm or meter of it. sound a little bit like guitar picking? Yep. Notice this thing happening again. I think uh, that song, um, Lonely Traveling Man, has got that same picking feeling you could play. <laughs> same feeling as the song Born Again. I'll show you a little bit uh, how you could do that one. Of course you have the intro. So you start with a bit of picking. Plus you're doing this melody with your right hand. And then you can roll, hit these chords. So the verse would be da 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 This is down a little higher. Let's look up here a bit. can do also octaves sometimes. To br if you really want to bring out a line, uh, sometimes you can really emphasize it by playing it in octaves. Like, um, you know, with doing nothing, you don't need any chords in between, just hitting the octaves themselves. Like that. Um, sometimes in a song, like I think in Climb That Mountain, uh, you've got uh, when you're going to reach the top, that part of the song. Just coming down this particular scale with octaves. It's kind of more powerful than just going. Or you kind of learn how to hold your fingers in that same 
interval wherever you move. You can go anywhere and you're always hitting octaves. Same with your right uh, with your left hand down here. It's kind of fun to play them both together. Um, actually that's an interesting point. You know we came down like this. There's a particular scale. Every song has its own sort of feeling or scale. Now a song like Climb That Mountain, uh, that run coming down would be. Now if I went like this, that wouldn't fit, would it, on the song Climb That Mountain? Because it's a major feeling. It's got a G and a D and a C. It's kind of a bright, happy feeling about that song. So if you're doing a run of notes or a fill, you kind of have to stay on this major feeling. That's like a... These are all those major notes. Or you could, you could go on up the scale. Now if it was a rock song, let's say like you were playing I Will Not Fear or something, sound kind of funny to go just doesn't fit because that's a rock song it's minor the notes that are in that it's a it's a different scale like you could go uh, and maybe we'll get in a little more into uh, what notes are in those scales hopefully but just to say that there are different scales and each song that you play if you want to do a little fill you can find you have to find what sounds right. Okay, how about a little rock and roll? We have a lot of songs in the family that fit in the rock and roll vein, or even rock music. So I'm going to show you a few lines of rock and roll. A typical bass line, if you want to look down here, uh, for a rock and roll song, probably one of the original rock and roll basses was this line, which you've all heard. If you're in C, then in F, G, and then back to C. Now if you put in a little uh, right hand there with it. You can put in a little jump beat here. Watch the left hand. Right here. You know, you can throw in these little things. We'll add a little swing. Another real common rock and roll beat would be... Uh, let's see. some of these tricks up here in the right hand too. Also, um, another kind of rock music might be something like this. Here again, we're imitating probably what the electric rhythm guitar would do. He'd be playing on his two bottom strings, this kind of a, this sort of feeling. It's a f what we call a fifth. You got your bass note and five notes are, and he's going five, six, seven. A lot of times they slide in like that. Or 
Or you could make that into what we call a shuffle beat, like... Same thing, you're just being, a, it's a little more bouncy tempo. Uh, you noticed I kind of walked down there. It's kind of fun sometimes when you're doing a bass line. It just uh, this one follows along a little later. You can even do that like this. kind of busy but it's a nice feeling now it's just real common and real natural in rock and roll music to hear something like this and these notes that are kind of uh, might sound a little dissonant or usually refer to them as blue notes for some reason but they're uh, instead of just hitting this note I can slide into it like that or this note I can slide into it or instead of hitting this note I can slide into it from above like in a rock scale um, let's try the key of A here you have an A chord here's your third and your fifth you might do that and then you might go Sometimes it's not just one note sliding before it, but two notes. Or going down. Or even three notes. Or you can play around with that a lot. It just gives it kind of a sort of a rock sound, bluesy sound. Actually, in a rock scale, <clears throat> in A minor, all these notes you can hit any of those and you'll have something that sounds like a good rock and roll lead hit one of those occasionally it's back almost back to your arpeggio again and if you have a beat going with it you know it sounds like a good sort of lead oh I noticed up there did you see how I went a lot of times I'll hit two notes and slide the bottom one. Or in C, instead of just hitting this, you can slide that. back down a lot of times you'll hear this with a little tremolo, tremolo on it I'll show it up here and you don't have to go you can also go or it's always lots of ways to do things you can get up to the top and use a little tremolo like that it's kind of like a honky-tonk sort of style in fact, let me show you a little bit of that. This was uh, kind of music that was popular, I think, when Dad was a boy. Uh, your left hand has got to be pretty coordinated because they're usually doing something like this with their left hand. They're hitting a bass in octaves, by the way, and then a chord, and then another bass note, and then a chord like this. But they really get going like... 
it's always hard for me to hit these chords because you really got to jump around. Then with your right hand, you're kind of twiddling around. So that's honky tonk or ragtime kind of piano. Let's see what we got next. How about along those same lines? I'll show you quite a common style we use in country music. Uh, and here, I think what we're really doing is we're imitating the sound of the good old country violin or fiddle, as they call it. Have you ever heard something like this? Because you see, when they play a violin, uh, they'll often keep one string open while they move on another string. And they'll play those two strings at the same time. And showing that on the piano, like if you're in the key of C, you might have this C hitting on every note while a melody kind of moves around here like this. That gives that real common country sound. I can move around, I can come down here. So your little finger there is taking care of that top note. And these other fingers down here are doing the movement. You can even use one of those blue notes. songs. Um, let's see. In the song, uh, A Few Little Hugs and A Few Little Kisses. Oh, which one? No, it was Clap Your Hands, sorry. Um, you know that's got that country fiddle sound in the middle of it. And I wanted to show you how you might be playing a country song like this, kind of a square dance feeling. I think in that song, at one point the bass drops out and he plays the melody. That's kind of a nice variation you can do sometimes. Your right hand keeps the melody going the offbeat. Bop, bop, bop. And your left hand does the melody. Takes a little practice, but it's fun. I'd like to show you an example of where you, uh, let's say you're, you're an instrumentalist, They're, people are not singing, you want to play the melody of a song, uh, but you're alone, so you kind of have to cover all the parts. Um, in the instrumental I did earlier, uh, Whither Shall I Go, you've got your... Meanwhile, you've got these arpeggios going. But occasionally, the right hand will, will take care of this uh, melody up here. And your bass, of course. You could do something like that. example before we end up here is uh, the song uh, Psalm 89 1 again I will sing of the mercies of the Lord I'm gonna get my bass going down here and get my offbeat going and then I'm going to do this melody it takes a little practice with your right hand Lord, that was fun. We'll be back. Uh, please come again for the next class, and uh, we'll go on to 
quite a few other types of music that you can enjoy. God bless you. Bye bye. <laughs>
Maybe this clash is too much to go. So you might wanna you might wanna let this finger follow that down for the first one. Now I can my my left hand down here is gonna go to the next half step down. I can let this slip back up now. See, just when I was coming by that C sharp, to my ear it clashes a bit. So I'm just going to let it slip down there. And I'll let this one slip back up again while the bass goes on down. And you end up on this nice B flat, major 7. End up on an A seventh and D minor. It's just a little progression there for you. Here's another nice chord progression when you want to fill in. Let's say you've got a song in E minor. You can, between parts, maybe put in a little line like this. An E minor, D, another E minor, another D, E minor. Just follow on down. D, E minor. So you've got this. About a C major 7. Just a nice riff or line that you can use. A minor. About A minor, we could go A minor, A minor, G, A minor, G. Okay, here's another kind of rhythm. Uh, I think it works on some of our songs. Uh, it's called reggae. In a reggae song, actually there's quite a few different kinds, but I'll just show you. You might have a You got this offbeat thing going in the in the right hand, mm, mm, like that, and, you, and your bass kind of bounces around. Or you might have a minor one. you can use it sometime. I wanted to show you, if you're playing instrumental music, how you can use these, what I was calling combined or slash chords. It's been quite common for a few years to hear music like this. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing a C chord and then just going to a D chord with this C still in the bass, you see. Then an F chord with the C still in the bass. Back to a C. Let's put the bass down an octave lower. That's kind of a grandiose sound about it. There's a, a C chord with a C bass. And you might go. There's an E flat. F. Another very common one is uh, like in the key of C, you might play a C. And then a G chord. But keep the C in the bass. F with C in the bass. born a child. Something like that. You have your F, then a C chord, but still the F in the bass. B flat with the F in the bass.
here's another interesting effect you can get. This is called a whole tone scale. Uh, if you move your finger up here and go to the right, you will hit every half step. Now, if you move your finger up there and skip every other one, you're not going to play this white note. You're going to go there because you're going to skip that. Skip that. There's only six. Normally, there's seven notes in the scale. If you do this, there's only six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this gives you a real dreamy sort of spacey sound. Let's do it on a G. That's called a whole tone scale. Here's another nice little thing you can do. Is uh, you know, You've probably seen this. Take a C chord, play the second note of the scale, and then along with along with these, and then rock back and forth to the F. Same same pattern, G. It's kind of pretty. In a minor key, you would have C minor. Uh, Play the second note, F minor. It's kind of a dramatic or mysterious sound to it. Uh, another chord you could play is here's C minor. Put the seventh under it, like that, and then play this second note. If you went to an F minor, it'd be down here. Put the seventh, and then play the second note of the scale. So you have. Now it won't work to go to G and do that. Well, I guess you could in some cases, but normally you want to hear a G seventh. It's kind of a modern, jazzy sort of sound. Okay. Here's another beat used in quite a few of our songs where the guitarist is going ding, diggy, ding, diggy, ding, diggy, ding. I always feel like calling this the horse beat because you feel like you're riding a horse. And it's used on uh, a lot of our songs. Um, I was just looking over a song list and I saw Across the Sky, Waco Earth, Love Came Down at Christmas. They all have this kind of ding, diggy, ding, diggy, ding sort of beat. Like if you were going to play Across the Sky, uh, you notice my left hand. You can try this doing with an octave, you can go like this. We'll, we'll ride across the sky. Bump, bada bump, bada bump, bada bump. Gives that kind of that motion. So I'm just rocking back and forth. Bump, 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 bump. You might get tired of doing that after a while. So another thing you can do is you can go like this. That's kind of hard to do. Sometimes when I have to repeat a note very quickly, instead of using one finger, you can use like let's say your second and finger and your thumb and go like this. Bump, ba da bump, ba da bump, ba da bump, like that. Going da 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 da. Same thing with your right hand. If you want to do a sort of a trumpet-like sound. If you want to repeat a note, you don't have to go with one finger. You can use two fingers. Sometimes in classical music, they'll even even use three, two, one, all on the same note. Just so each one can be staccato, like da -da 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 -da, real short. That's something you can have fun with. How about a twist beat? Take the song, uh, Where Would We Be? Uh, the basic twist beat is uh, the, 
the basic thing I think about a twist is you've got like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you put that into your right hand, like, and then put a bass line with it. A lot of our family songs have kind of this twist feeling to them, actually. There's another feeling uh, that we have in our songs is, um, you know the song, Here We Are, Here We Are All Together? Uh, let's see if that's a good key. Here we are all together. You know that song? You could play a part like this. You probably know another song very similar to this. You're just rocking from two bass notes to two chords. Or the memo book song, uh, He Heareth Us. He Heareth Us. It's got that sort of feeling to it also. So you can try that on songs like that. How about a song like um, My Lord's Carrying Me? Here's a song that's got a kind of a happy-go-lucky sort of beat. You can sort of play the chords, this pulse with your right hand, and your left hand down here kind of... It's kind of bouncing. Bum, bum, bum. Now what I might do is I might play an offbeat with my right hand like But I as I showed you in the previous class I try not to just leave that bass note all lonely by itself I often put another note with it from my right hand. And I might as well take advantage of it as long as I'm going to hit a note. Instead of just hitting a C on a C chord, I can hit a harmony with it like this. A C down there and an E up here. That's kind of a nice rocking along sort of beat. this a little bit, then back to the other. So you can change styles halfway through if you want. Little accent, instead of just going da 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 straight through it, why don't I accent it? Ba 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 ba, it's a long, long road that I know where I'm walking. Another style of song we use a lot is uh, gypsy music. And one way you can play gypsy music, as I was showing at the beginning of this show, it's kind of like, I think we did this for, uh, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Now if you pick that up pretty fast, you get this kind of a, play a minor chord, A minor. Da -da -dum, ba -da -bum, ba -bum, ba you got this gypsy sound going. Did you notice that? Watch my right hand. Put a little accent there. Another thing you can do, it's kind of fun, is play an arpeggio up and down. Like this. But you go kind of fast. With your... You can get going real fast on it. D minor. E. Even 
sign up. Pedro. It's something you can practice. It's really fun to play those fast arpeggios and get it down. Um, another type of song would be like um, take the song Walk a Mile. Uh, a lot of times your left hand is doing a lot of work, like playing a fast bass guitar run or part like a like the chorus of Walk a Mile could have a bass line like this. Walk a mile. Something like this. Da da ba da da da. Da ba 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 da 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 da. Some this kind of running thing. It's constantly going. Walk a walk a mile, walk a mile in his shoes. You can go. You can do octaves and walk up like ba 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 ba, but play the octave an octave higher in between. That's uh, sometimes that's a way to get out of having to go ba ba da 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 to move your one finger real fast. Just put the second note an octave higher and and trade off because you can do that real fast. similar song I thought of in this tempo would be, uh, well it's a little slower, but uh, the song Robot. In the Robot you've got this octave bass going. So that's another kind of bass line you can use, just rock back and forth from the root up to the octave. He's in love with the robot. Now here, watch this. That's a C and a B and a B flat and an A. Especially made for him. Another song, uh, another type of beat would be uh, What Did Jesus Do? My left hand is going bum. This is a D and then an F sharp minor and then a B minor. So my bass is going. And my right hand is doing this. Can go down to those accents. The kind of common beat would be, for example, the song "Nice to Be Here." You've, on a guitar, you'd be going dun da dun ka dun ka dun ka dun like a. See, you go bum bum ba da da da. That's what you do on your guitar. Dun ka dun da ba ba. You kind of hit those accents. That's a F, a C, and then a G, and then C G. Now, I know I'm doing a lot of fast little rhythms in here, but uh, it's kind of hard to explain. I'm just doing what I feel. Like, I want to keep this, this kind of fast inner feeling going. Sometimes it's here in my thumb. Sometimes it's up here. It's kind of like it keeps the excitement in the beat.
I've never actually sat down and thought about what my left hand is doing, but I know that I'm thinking of this beat. Bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. I'm just kind of letting it rock around on those basic bass notes, whatever it feels like doing kind of thing. Just got to picture yourself as a, a drummer sometimes, you know, just feel those beats going in the music. Another fun style would be like a country gospel, which could be something like Oh in the Sky. got this basic bass line going boom, 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 boom. And then your right hand is doing this. You might put a little, let's put a seventh in there, up here in my right hand. There's a D chord. I'm going to put a seventh down here at the bottom. So uh, D seventh, G, D seventh. Now sometimes when I hit this D seventh, I might drop these two notes here because I need my thumb to go up here and slide into that F sharp. Just drop those if I if I need my thumb to go up to, to go like this. D seven, G, and here's another D, but I want to slide in there. slide up there. Now, <laughs> did you see that? I went, I'll do this in slow motion. See, you, your hand's kind of filling in those little beats. But you're not playing it really loud, it's just kind of soft. It's just in the back, I don't know, maybe it's like the tambourine part or something. Um, you can do I have decided to follow Jesus that way too. I have decided to follow Jesus. Did you see that bass line? That's real common. Walk down. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. This is where you got this. Uh, instead of I won't turn back, a C chord and then a G. You can leave your G on the bottom of that C chord. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. Okay, I want to show you a few more arpeggios. Um, one would be a song like Don't Be Afraid of Tears, which is kind of a... It's like a slow four. One, two, three, four. But each beat is divided into three, if you count fast. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. Put a little bass under this arpeggio. This is this nice third thing going here. Or if I did it with a bass. Don't be afraid of tears. It's a real typical old bass line. Another rhythm of arpeggios would be a song that's in kind of a feeling of three, like the impossible dream, for example. To dream the impossible dream. You're counting, you're thinking this. One, two, three. One, two, three. To fight. Two, three. One, two, three. But each of those beats is actually divided again into three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three. You could count it like this. One, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three. One, two, three, two, two, 
feeling that you might need to you could use this on that song another uh, uh, one of the hymns that has that feeling is blessed assurance blessed assurance Jesus is mine it's that same feeling one two three two two three three two Okay, here we'll go into something a little more modern. Um, I will not fear. This is a real common beat that goes under a lot of our songs. Uh, when I'm down and I'm out, discouraged, and when I start to doubt. Okay, basically you've got the left hand going bum, 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 bum. It's the root, it's an E minor chord. You've got the root, the fifth up here, and then the fifth down here. And your, le and your right hand, it's kind of an E minor 7. Here's an E minor. But I'm going to put the 7th down here, and I'm going to take that 5th, put it down here too. That's a B minor 7. B minor 7. There's a, I'm going basically ba 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 but then in between I'm adding a little ba 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 just kind of throw it in there a little bit it's not very loud that's the same kind of beat you would have under fire and ice I think fire and ice ba da ba 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 This leads into um, another style of music, which is called bossa nova. It's kind of a soft uh, Latin feeling. And I think the song Let Love Touch Your Life falls into that slot a little bit. Bossa nova is basically a, a, a bass feeling like bum, 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 bum. But the, the uh, counter rhythm that's going on is bum, bum. That's a real pretty kind of rhythm you can use. show you a little bit of jazz. This is probably one of the least used styles in the family. Uh, most of our songs don't use it. You might use it for a spoof <laughs> on system music. Uh, normally in jazz you've typical, maybe slightly older jazz, you've got this bass player, you know, playing the stand-up bass and he's going something like He's got this kind of walking walking bass line going Sort of that sort of thing. And your right hand would just be hitting these kind of rhythmic chords. You could do something like that. Um, a lot of times in jazz, so the bass player is taking care of the bass, so the the uh, pianist will use his left hand to provide chords, and his right hand will be doing some kind of lead. And you see, he's just hitting these jazzy chords. You got like a C sixth, a D minor seventh. E minor seventh, E flat minor seventh. This is kind of a weird one. That's actually like a G seven. 
but he puts a sixth in there. And he lets his root come up to this. This sort of thing. Won't get too much into that. This is a nice chord. Uh, C major 9. Where this could sound nice would be if I... You see, we're playing every other note on the white notes. we got C major, C major 7. And then you add a 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to take these two and raise them up an octave. It's kind of a nice feeling. Same thing on an F chord. Um, a style of music that was used, I think, uh, mostly back, or starting in the 40s anyway, is you take a melody and you play it in octaves. Have you ever heard this song? Well, I can take that melody. I'll play it in octaves. But along with that melody, I will fill in all the notes of the chord. That's a C chord, so I'm going to play a C. I could even put a sixth in there. This is still a C chord, so even though I'm playing a G note, I've got to fill in the notes on a C6 chord. This is a G7, so I'm filling in all the, the sevenths, all the notes I mean of a G7 chord. You see, every note that you hit, you fill in all the, the notes in between. It's kind of a little bit complicated. F, made, F uh, minor 6. Let me show you a couple examples of uh, some piano parts that I'm familiar with. The intro of Why Is That Tear In Your Eye. This is an example of a got your bass here, your right hand is playing the melody, and you're filling in some arpeggios in between it. Do that again. This is your second kind of chord. That's, you call that a suspended second because that's the second note in the scale. How about the intro of um, the song Moments? This one. Sometimes you get a little more power, a little more emphasis by these octaves. This is an A minor and I'm starting on an A here. That's a F major 7. My left hand is playing this open F as kind of a support for that chord. And then my right hand up here is playing this the melody. And then you got this little E in there. That's the only part that tells you this is an F major 7. I don't have to have it down here or here. I can just throw it in that one part. G, A minor. And here's this. And what that is is A minor with a G chord and then A. This is another one of those combination chords. This is another example of you're going to keep the same right hand but let your bass down here walk down. A minor with a G bass. That's an F major 7. G. Let the bass walk down again. It's a G chord with an F bass. And finally down to a C major 7. With this kind of open feeling up here. And then... That's a nice chord, by the way. Feels a bit Spanish. 
it's a, uh, how can we describe it? It's like a F major seven. But instead of this, you leave that on the B because you were, you were on an E chord. Well, you're going to an E chord anyway. And this B is part of that E chord. And that E is part of the E chord too. I can keep these two notes, but these two, raise them a half step. Kind of leads nicely in there. You were on a C major seven, and then you went. Da, 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 da. You could just play da 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 da. It's an A minor chord, but if you want, you can also play it with your with your uh, fifth finger there, and with a third below it. These two. to another song. Climb that mountain. Let me just play a little bit of this. Uh, I'll explain to you, try to explain to you what I'm doing as I do it. So you get your beat going with the right hand. Your left hand is giving you that bum bum. That's a A seventh with a C sharp in the bass. Then back to the G. Jesus is coming and it won't be long. That's a D. Put your G in there, it gives you a D sus4. E minor. That gospel keeps singing that song. Or an octave lower. Now, you notice that one point there, I broke into kind of a, we started like, climb that mountain, but it's kind of a nice feeling you get with your left hand doing that. My pulse went down into the left hand, and then the rhythm went into my right hand. And it kind of slipped back into the other one. We're forgetting all the things which are behind. See, I could just go bum, 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 but it's more interesting if you can put in these inner rhythms. There's that thing again that we uh, had in the first class, I think. Where you're going, you're taking your G chord, I'm sorry, this. And then you're moving these two. Pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Now here, oh my weary body aches. You get that pulse going down in your left hand, and your right hand's doing. It's hard for me just to do that straight because I want to. I feel like I need more movement, so I, I throw in those little beats, bum, 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 mm, like. Now this is a, this is actually a D ninth, this chord. I'll just show you that. It's a D, F sharp, A, C, E. Put that A on the top again. But actually we're, we're dropping out all this part. And we're just going to have that third F sharp down here in the bass. So once again, and I walked up to it. So I went. And you get that boom, bah, boom, bah. It's kind of a nice. A7, sus4. That's a. Okay, here's an A chord. Make it sus4 by moving the third up to the fourth. And put a seventh in there. Put your bass. Drop this guy. It's kind of a nice chord.
chord. B minor 7 with a B bass. E minor 7. Now here's an A7. There's your A chord with the 7th and this uh, third, the C sharp down in the bass. So let me play that far again. Now you can hold a D chord if you want all the way through here and just let your bass walk down. Um, depending on how you like it, C in the bass. When you get to this B, you could change to a G chord with your right hand. It's a little more harmonious. Anyway, meanwhile, you could do something like this. So that's, we hit a D chord. And then in octaves, this. Let's play a G chord there. And another D chord with that A in the bass. I don't know if you can see down there, but I want to show you this run in the right hand. It's a perfect place for one of those typical runs. You're actually hitting a E, D, B, A, G, but you're doing it in octaves. It takes a little practice to do those kind of octave things. somewhere in the song too we went like like that this kind of build up thing that same scale something like that so let's give you another verse and chorus of that one climb that mountain no matter how steep you can do these little slide things ba da da gospel, keep singing that song. We're forgetting all the things which are behind, and we're reaching for the things which are before. Pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. Walked up there with some octaves in between. too clear. I was going kind of fast. Uh, if you're in the key of A minor or A, I was doing some little twiddly things up here. The notes we're hitting are kind of like A, G, E, E flat, D, C. And basically it's like that all the way down, up and down. Seems like about anything you do on those notes. Here I'm hitting a, the seventh and sliding up to that. That's these two notes and these two with your thumb going in between them there. And sliding into that. Here's a, that's a real typical sound. That's, uh, you're in A here, so you're hitting the C, which is like kind of a minor, part of A minor, and you got this uh, F sharp, which 
best thing I can tell you is it's a sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. There I went on the E chord. D chord, same thing. And then this thing in. Da, 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 da. You know, you can just fool around and do this type of things up there. That's a little thing, twiddly thing you can do. C, B, A. Did you catch that? That's uh, with your thumb and your second finger, you're going da 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 da, but your right hand is your, I mean, your little finger is still holding the A. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap it up. We've covered a lot of styles, and I really hope you can catch uh, what I've shared on the video. I had to go kind of fast, but uh, maybe if you just watch it over, over again and rewind it and keep experimenting. I just wanted to remind you that everything I've showed you, I didn't learn out of books, but um, mostly learned it just by listening. Uh, trying to imitate, copy, see how somebody else did it. So keep listening to and studying good music and keep experimenting. Be patient, determined, don't give up. Keep at it and have fun. And most of all, keep a vision for why you're doing it, which is to be a blessing to others and use the talent that God has given you. If you use what you've got, I'm sure that God will give you more. So God bless you with happy music and spirit-filled music and fruitful music in Jesus' name.